Today, I'm going to compare three of the most popular active line output converters that are on the market today. The three that I have to compare are Kickers Keylock, Audio Controls LC2i, and Wavetex Link DQ. Each LOC has a slightly different way of processing an incoming signal and sending that signal out to one or more amplifiers. My plan is to install each LOC in my 2022 Hyundai Veloster N. I will grab signal from the OEM amplifier's subwoofer speaker wire outputs. I will then run pink noise and take measurements of the output signal with my U-Mic 1 microphone. The results will be displayed using REW software. I want to show what the differences are between each of these LOCs. Also, I will show what the difference is in bass output between the stereo's volume before bass roll-off and at maximum volume level. Before I began installing each of the LOCs, I hooked up a battery maintainer I recently purchased. This battery maintainer works great when I'm tuning my car's audio system. I can keep the car in the on position and perform all my tuning work without having to worry about draining my battery. Before I had this device, I would unfortunately drain my battery and have to jump start the car. This device helps me keep working without putting excess wear on my battery. I will have a link to this product and all the other products discussed in the video in the video description. After I hooked up the battery maintainer, I removed the passenger seat so that I could gain easier access to the factory amplifier. To remove the seat, unscrew the four 10mm bolts holding the seat in place. I would suggest using a 12.10mm socket. Once the bolts have been removed, push the front seat up and detach the four wire harnesses. After the harnesses have been unhooked, remove the seat from the car. Now we're ready to install the first LOC. First up, the kicker key lock. This LOC features a built-in DEQ DSP. This is particularly helpful when trying to upgrade a premium factory system that has been tuned by the vehicle's manufacturer to maximize the performance of the car's factory speakers. The Veloster is equipped with a Harman Kardon premium stereo, so it will be interesting to see how much of a difference this LOC makes versus the other two that don't have the same feature. With a kicker key lock hooked up, I needed to test a couple of things using a multimeter and oscilloscope. To perform the test, you'll need to tap into one of the subwoofer's voice coil positive and negative wires and attach the multimeter to those wires. The first test was I needed to find out at what volume does the factory stereo start to clip the signal. For this, I used an oscilloscope function on the multimeter. I found that the signal does not clip at any volume, even when turned all the way to max volume, which is 45. The second test I needed to perform was to find out at what point does the factory system begin to roll off the base. For this test, I switched the multimeter to AC volts, then played a 40 Hz tone from my phone using a tone generator app, and turned the volume up slowly until I saw the voltage stop from increasing. I found the voltage stopped increasing when I hit volume 34. Finally, the third test I performed was a sweep test to see what the highest voltage the factory stereo put out. For the second and third test, you can use a tone generator or download files from Kicker's website. I found the stereo put out a maximum voltage of 8.15 volts. This was needed to determine what voltage setting I needed to set each LOC to. All of them could be set on their lower voltage setting since the factory system did not put out more than 10 volts. With the preliminary test complete, I installed, set up, and tested each LOC. I sent signal out to a Rockford Fosgate P300 10-inch powered subwoofer. The subwoofer's gain and bass boost were set to zero, and the crossover was set between 70 and 75 hertz. Let's take a look at the test results. Since I installed the kicker key lock first, we'll begin with its graphs. The first graph shows how the subwoofer performed with the key lock's EQ feature turned on versus off and the volume set at 34. You can see that the EQ did make a difference between 40 and 60 Hertz. To be able to turn the key locks EQ on and off, after you've completed the setup process, you can press the key button to toggle the EQ on and off. The number four EQ light will turn off to let you know that the EQ has been disabled. The next graph shows the same comparison, but with the volume maxed out at 45. The subwoofer's maximum volume doesn't increase, but the overall curve does. Here's a comparison of all the kicker's curves to one another. There's an increase in bass response at volume 45 versus 34, 
whereas before, the bass signal just rolled off after 40 Hz when increasing the volume past 34. Next, I reviewed the Audio Control LC2i. First with the volume set at 34, then at 45. Afterwards, I compared the key lock with the EQ on versus the LC2i and the volume set at 34. There is approximately a 3 decibel difference between the two LLC's output. The following graph shows the difference between the key lock with the EQ off, then on, versus the LC2i. The next two graphs show the results between the two LLC's with the head unit's volume set at 45. The first graph has the key lock EQ on and the following graph with it off. Now we move on to WaveTech Link DQ, the third LLC in this review. As we've done before, the first graph shows the results of the Link DQ with the volume at 34, then 45. You'll notice that both graphs are much lower than the other two LLC's graphs. This could be an error I made when setting up the LLC but I set it as per the instructions. The clip light seemed to come on sooner than the other two LLCs, which could have contributed to the lower output. After the initial test of the linked EQ, I decided to add the parametric EQ. First, I set the EQ to 40 Hz with a three decibel gain and a wide Q. Then I changed the EQ to 50 Hz and the gain was set to 12 decibels. I wanted to see how the graph would look with the gain set to max. With the link DQ tested, I moved on to comparing all three LOCs. I left the Link DQ's graphs up and added in the LC2i. Even with the Link DQ's EQ set to maximum, it still didn't produce the same amount of output that the LC2i did. I deselected the Link DQ's lower graphs and left the one that compared the closest to the LC2i's graph. Then I added in the key lock with the EQ turned on. Here's a comparison of all three at volume 45. Again, the Link DQ has its EQ maxed out at 50 Hz. Finally, here's a look at adding the Link DQ's non-EQ graph at volume 45. To help give a better comparison between the graphs, I decided to add a gain offset to the Link DQ's graphs. This will solve any issue with my setup of the LOC. I did my best to match up the non-EQ'd graph with the LC2i graph. I then did the same for the other Link DQ graphs. Now let's add each volume 34 graph on top of one another. Kicker, no EQ. Kicker with EQ. Audio control. WaveTech. WaveTech 40 Hz 3 dB EQ. And finally, WaveTech 50 Hz 12 dB EQ. Some people may want to see the SPL difference between each LOC graph. So I will go through each file. Please feel free to pause the video. All three LOCs are good products and will perform well as an LOC. Plus, they are all similarly priced. You may need to choose one over another based on its features. The key lock may be better for someone looking for a full system integration solution where a flat deq would signal is required when you want to use the factory head unit. The LC2i seemed to have the best sound for bass, plus comes with a bass knob if you purchase the newer LC2i Pro, which I would recommend you do. Also, it has two outputs, one for a subamp and one for a full range amp. The WaveTech Link DQ is the only one with RCA inputs, which would allow you the option to hook up a phone or other device as a source unit. If you're interested in any of the line output converters discussed in the video, please use the links in the video description to purchase one today. After performing all the testing, it was clear that the Kicker Key Lock had the most output of all the LOCs. Even with the increase in performance, my wife and I agreed that we both actually liked the sound of the subwoofer using the audio control LC2i. So that's the one that we're going to keep in the car. I would love to hear your thoughts about the results shown in the video. Also, what LLC are you using and what do you like or dislike about it? Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.